This section is called Finding Love. In this section, we will learn all about the active query component in Yi2, which helps us easily generate more complex SQL queries in order to search through our application data quickly. We'll also attempt to spruce up the search UI a bit using a Twitter bootstrap-based widget. Next, we'll learn how to sort and paginate our search results using the list view widget. Finally, we'll learn how to create and use alternate themes for our application. Let's jump right into the first video of this section, finding the right Ghoulmate using Active Query. In this video, we'll learn how to use the Active Query component to search through our application's data. We'll learn how to perform several different types of searches, including partial string matches, exact string matches, integer range searches, as well as searching for data in related tables. Without further delay, let's get started. There's a little bit of extra work that we need to get prepared for this video. Check out video 6.1 in the code samples, and then run section 6.sql, which is located in the DB directory, on your database using your favorite MySQL management tool. Now, log into your Vagrant server, switch to your project application route, and rerun the monster load monsters command using the ye executable. We've added an additional table, skin, as well as a column in the monster table called skin ID, which links each monster record to a value in that skin table. You'll see why we did that in just a minute. For now, let's work on our list view for a minute, which is where our search fields are going to go. Before we do that, though, let's quickly remove the Create Monster button from this page, because we're now using our Register page to create new monsters. You may already notice that there is some code in this view that references another partial view called underscore search on this page, but that it's commented out. Go ahead and uncomment it, and reload the listing page you'll see that our new form appears above the list of monsters. The code that controls this form is located in views monster underscore search dot PHP. So let's go ahead and open it up. The first thing that we'll do is get rid of the ID, password, and auth key lines because it doesn't really make any sense to search those fields. Let's go ahead and type M in the gender box and then click the search button and you'll see that only our male monsters show up on our list. But how does that work? Open up controllers, monstercontroller.php, and look at the action index method. You'll see that the controller loads an instance of our monster search model, which we generated with Gee earlier, and then provides the search parameters to its search method. So the next logical step is to open up the monster search model and see how the search method works. In short, it returns an active data provider object, which takes the return value of monster find as a parameter. Find simply returns an instance of active query, and that's what this video will focus on. You can see that after the search parameters are loaded and the model is validated, that the active query object uses method chaining to add a series of conditions to our query. All calls use the and filter where method to add where statements to our SQL query. The first syntax you see simply has key value pairs. This will generate an equals condition. You'll see that age is searched for this way. So for instance, if we switch back, back to our browser and we search for 99 in age, we get no results. However, if we search for 999, Dracula is returned. The second syntax takes an extra parameter at the beginning of the method, and that parameter specifies something called an operand. For instance, you can see that name uses the like operand. This means ye will append a like query to your SQL. So go ahead and take dr in the full name field, and you'll find that Dracula is again returned. Returning to our monster search model, we can see that it probably isn't helpful to search for an age using an exact match, but gender might be a good candidate for this field. We'll also get rid of id because we've already removed that from our search form. While we're at it, let's go ahead and copy the gender dropdown from our monster creation form into the search form so that only valid values can be entered. It doesn't make much sense to search by exact age, but rather for a range of ages. So first, let's change the age input to begin age. Then we'll duplicate this line and change the second one to end age. Next, we need to move over to the monster search model and add these as public attributes, because otherwise ye won't allow us to set them in the controller. Because they should be an integer, we'll also go ahead and add them to the corresponding rule. Finally, we need to head down to the search method and add a few end filter where lines. The operand for begin age will be greater than or equals, 
and the operand for end age will be less than or equals. Run a couple of searches and you'll see that we're on the right track. The final type of search that we'll do is for related values. All of that SQL we ran at the beginning of the video created a skin table, which has a few options for skin tone. Let's face it, monsters focus on appearance just like the rest of us. When we reloaded the data in our monster table, we also added some values linking each monster record to a corresponding skin tone using a foreign key. The skin model is linked to the monster model using the active record relations feature. Let's use what we just learned in the last section to generate a checkbox list of all of the different options for skin tone. Head to your search form partial view and add a use statement for the array helper and skin classes. We'll use the map method again to create a map of all of the different skin tones in the skin table. Next, let's use the checkbox list method of the active field object to generate our list and feed it the map that we just created as its only parameter. Finally, we have to add another validation rule and another end filter where call to the search method of monster search. This time, the operand is in. Switch back to the browser and search for monsters with green skin. You'll see that Frankenstein and the Wicked Witch are returned. Add pale to your search options and Dracula will join the party. Now you know how to use Active Query to create complex SQL statements with a minimal amount of effort. In the next video, we'll try to spruce up our search UI a little bit and add the type ahead widget.